great. Okay, so I've just made a special example, and this is going to be for the third module for the criminal intent solution. And the purpose here is not to give away the source code, but rather to go over the source code that's been provided with the book and to walk you through a little bit of the example that's been discussed in the chapter. But at no point will we actually give away the source code. So you'll see the source code a little bit, but it, it still remains the, pro the property of the author. And we recommend, of course, that you buy the book um, and in no way you know, acquire this in any other way. What I do want to do is I want to walk you through the material in the chapter. Um, this happens to coincide with our third week where, or our third module where we're going to go over module three, lab one. And so the first move that I'm going to make when I get into this example is I'm going to go over to um, Android uh, manifest, that XML. And the deal here is we're only going to have one activity this week. And that activity is going to be called crime activity. The purpose of the app is to take pictures of things that are seen within an office that are somehow out of place. Like, oh, there's some dirty dishes. Oh, that's a crime. Take a picture of that and then put in some information related to where it was, et cetera. So that's what crime activity is. Now, crime activity is a real piece of Java called crime activity that we're going to open up in just a minute. You see that it's very short. But one of the interesting things that differentiates traditional console Java that you guys do at the beginning of your education and the Android Java is that console Java has what's called a main. And the main is the start position. It's the, it's the entry point for that program. And it's within the main where all the fundamental uh, compilation units are put together. So here, the crime activity, we need to call it the main within uh, Android Manifest in order for it to be triggered first and it to be called as the launching class when Android opens up. So understand that you're, you're making a brand new project here um, and crime activity is going to be really the starting point. So from here, Android jumps over to crimeactivity.java and you can see where that is inside of this source. Let me take a look at crimeactivity.java. And crime activity is, is, of an, is an object of type fragment activity. Now, you guys have heard of intents. You've heard of activities. And now we're going to talk about fragments. Now, fragments are little pieces of, they're little user interfaces that can be pasted on top of an activity. Okay? So what crime activity really is, it's an activity that hosts a fragment. And a fragment is where buttons appear and text, item, you know, text items appear. Um, and so what we do is we override and we implement the, uh, the onCreate event. And we, we create a layout that includes the activity crime. So it passes control over to the activity crime .xml layout. Right, that's going to be inside of you know, activity crime, inside of the layout, inside of the res folder. And you notice that this thing is totally empty. There's nothing there. And the reason for that is because this is an, an activity is a screen. You know, it's like a window. It's like a web page. It's just a window. But the way that you guys have done it thus far is you've used your activity as a place where you drag in various buttons. Right, you maybe put a text box there. Uh, you know, you put, you know, you put interface elements inside of your activity. That's fine. That'll work out perfectly. An activity is just a screen. But you can also just, call, just say to the activity, hey, activity, don't have any user interface elements there at all. Just be really simple and instead hand off to what's called a fragment. And a fragment is a user interface. It's going to be with buttons and text items and other stuff. But instead of making the buttons inside of the activity, we're going to make the buttons inside of the fragment. So what it's going to do is it's going to say, OK, grab the fragment manager and then load a fragment whose name is going to be called crime fragment. And so control is going to be passed over to crime fragment. And you'll see here that crime fragment has really the substance. And also crime fragment is going to look and feel a lot like the activity has felt over the last two weeks. 
where there's going to be uh, buttons and check boxes and text buttons and even a, a Java, plain old Java object that's going to be controlled from within the fragment. So this crime fragment is going to be of type fragment, which is going to be the new item that we're going to talk about this week. When you think about a fragment, and what we do here is we're going to say, go ahead, make a view, and then inflate a layout called fragment crime. So go over to fragmentcrime.xml. And so this is going to be something that looks very familiar. It's going to look like the activity that you guys made last week. So these are going to be you know, a date chooser. We're going to call crime date. Um, there's going to be a, a, a checkbox there that's going to be called uh, whether the crime is solved. It's going to be called crime solved. And then there's going to be a title for that that's going to be called ID is going to be called crime titled. And that fragment is going to be accessed from within um, crime fragment. So the first thing that the, the fragment is going to do is it's going to inflate a view called fragment crime. That's pretty interesting. Now, I, I could say, OK, the activity paints the fragment on top of it, or the, uh, the activity loads the fragment. The language that you're going to use, though, is that the activity uh, inflates this fragment. And that's pretty interesting. That's the, 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 uh, the Android uh, lingo for it. And so from there, we're going to define our title field that we declared at the top. We're going to connect it to the crime title, which is right here. That's going to be crime title by ID, remember? And, and then we're going to add a, a, a text change listener. And when it changes, we're going to work with the, the plain old Java object called crime to set the title to that. Now that's pretty interesting because all the crimes are defined as crimes that have a title and a date and a solved. And if you think about that, well that makes sense because the user interface has uh, a date and a title and a solved. And so the user interface is directly going to be populating a plain old Java object that's going to kind of keep track of those variables throughout the lifecycle of the program. You know, so you could make an array of crimes, for example, that could be um, explored you know, through the user interface. So crimefragment.java is going to talk back and forth to that crime object, right? this, this variable mcrime of type crime, uh, whenever we work with the various uh, uh, interface items. So we have a date button and a solve checkbox that's also controlled here. And they're connected to the ID of elements here, just as you did in the first two weeks. So again, you know, this basic, this basic kind of um, work ethic is first move you make is you create the user interface that interests you and you drag out the pieces that you want. You make it look the way that you want it to look. And then you take a break, drink a cup of coffee, then you come back and you assign IDs to each of the important pieces. And everything from a label to a, you know, a text text box to you know a date entry they, they can all have IDs and the moment that they have IDs we can control uh, we can control their content from within our uh, Java objects so that's going to kind of wrap up the bulk of the programming for the lab one for this module um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we need to talk about that's kind of the the cliff notes version I think I spent it maybe a little bit more time lecturing, but that's about the right route to take. So I think what you do is you go ahead, go into your, to your Eclipse, uh, make an Android project from existing code, load the source code that we've talked about today, then go ahead and walk through this uh, YouTube um, so that you become familiar with the kind of the workflow that you should go through, you know, the step-by-step -step that you take. I think, frankly, you're going to have to work with the, the Android manifest here to declare um, this activity. Because you'll go in, when you make a new project, you know, you're going to make a new you know, Android project, um, application project. And when you're finished with that, you're going to make a new Android activity. And when you make that act Android activity, which will be um, activity crime, or crime activity rather, you're going to declare that as the main and as the launcher. 
which means it'll be the first uh, activity that the user will see. And I mean, we're not taking it easy on you guys. You know, we're not really holding back. Um, you know, we're really showing you very real professional um, Android. So, you know, I think, I think if you guys will remind me simply to make these YouTubes every week, I think that means that folks can go away and watch it a couple of times. And then what I'm saying is probably the YouTube will be an important extra um, artifact so that when you're finished with the YouTube and coding, you can go and read the book a little bit and the book is just going to flow. You know, repetition is just so important, you know, at any learning stage, no matter what stage of your career you're in. So, all right, so why don't we shut this down? I think we've covered it pretty effectively. Um, just to summarize, you know, the first thing we did is we, um, we worked with the Android manifest. We set up crime activity as the major, you know, controlling Java. It's kind of the main. Crime activity is, is going to host a fragment that's going to be called crime fragment. That'll drive control over to crime fragment where we'll have, you know, where we'll identify fragment crime as the, as the fragment that's of interest to us. And from here, we'll have a couple of IDs placed on these interface elements that'll help us to control that from crime fragment. And from here, we'll just initialize the various uh, text fields and date buttons. Uh, date button is the type that we'll use here. And we'll use those interface elements to talk back and forth to a data, a data type that we'll define called crime, which is a plain old Java object. And this is what I didn't talk about. A crime object has a title, a date, and whether or not, you know, a true or false value, whether it was solved or not. And this is going to look very familiar to, you know, Java 101, where You'll have a constructor for that, that plain old Java object. You'll have a get and a set, and you'll have an is, you know, you'll, you'll have just a very simplistic Java object that'll manage the data uh, behind the scenes of that interface. Okay? So therein, you kind of have four different role playing files. You know, the main file, the fragment controller, and then the plain old Java object that will kind of be controlling what the user sees when they interact with these, um, these uh, interfaces called fragments. So, all right, don't forget to hit subscribe.